Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can use tape saturation to beef up your kick drum sounds. Okay, so I've got a kick drum here, I've got a drum mix I'm gonna show you, uh, and this is a gent or a progressive metal style song, so bear that in mind as we're going through this kick drum mix here. Um, I'm gonna start by taking off these last two um, plugins on the kick drum. So I can show you the kick drum as I initially mixed it when I was doing my drum mix for this song, okay? So here's our kick drum as I as it initially sounded when I finished the drum mix. Okay, so it sounds pretty good. It's got that low end weight. It's got that top end punch that we want coming off that uh, that beater. We've got that beater slap at the top. Uh, we've got our low, our I'm sorry, our low mids cut out that 400 hertz area, and we're getting a little bit of that kind of uh, basketball sound pulled out in that one and a half k and three k area. Okay, so we're pulling a little bit about a little bit of that high mid slap out that we don't want. Okay, so we can get that high end beater slap around that seven eight k area to stand out a little bit more. Okay, so we've got the kick drum sounding pretty good. Okay, uh, it sounds awesome with the drums. Let me throw in the rest of the drums. It sounds pretty good. Okay, so with the addition of our room and our overheads, uh, we've got that low end there that we want on our kick drum. Now the problem shows itself when we add in the bass guitar, okay? So take a listen here. I'm gonna add in the bass guitar with our kick drum. Now we lost all that low end punch on our kick drum, right? So this, this bass part, is lower tuned, it's got a lot of low end in it, it's got a lot of low end attack in it, so when we add it in with our kick drum, suddenly our kick drum low end is neutered, right? It no longer has all that attack and that punch that we want, okay? So take a listen to the bass and drums together. Now our kick drum sounds weak compared to our heavy bass sound, okay? So the first move I reached for was this EQ, right? This is what I would normally do, pull in another EQ and start pulling up some low end on the kick drum. So take a listen to this EQ move by itself. Okay, so in isolation, I thought that did the trick, okay? Half a, D, half a dB at 80 hertz, that kind of, that's that area that you feel in your chest when the kick drum's hitting. Um, I thought that did the trick. So let's throw in the rest of our drums, throw in our bass, not quite cutting them. They're not quite sitting together yet. So I reached back here, started to add more low end, dB and a half, 2 dB. It's not quite doing what I want it to do. It's adding more low end, but it's not adding more attack, it's not adding more punch, and it's not making it sit in the track with the bass guitar, okay? It kind of just adds more of that kind of that feeling that you have in your head the more you push up that 80 hertz area. And that's not what I want to happen. That's not fixing this track. That's not a move that's suited for this track, okay? So in addition to that half dB move we did earlier, I added a tape machine, okay? Now this soft tube tape machine, if you put it on this B type here, uh, and we're at the 15 ips tape speed, it really adds some good low end to your kick drum, okay? So we'll do it without and then we'll add it in halfway through and you can hear what it's doing to this kick drum sound. Let me pull out the rest of the drums here so you can hear it. Okay, so here's without. Hear how it pulls that kick drum forward, but it's not all of the kick drum. It's not over-exaggerating our top end, and it's not over-exaggerating our beater attack. It's bringing forward our low-end beef and our low-end attack that's really gonna drive this song. One more time without. Hear how our low-end tucked back. And that beef, that beater attack on the low-end that low air coming off of our, our kick drum head, sounds awesome. Okay, let's throw it in with the rest of our drums. We'll do one more before and after here. 
So here's before and then after in our whole drum mix. Now our kick drum is really driving the song, really driving this drum mix here. Sits right in with that aggressive, that hard hitting snare sound. Now let's throw in our bass, we'll do the same thing, we'll do one more before and after, okay? So here's before the tape machine, sitting with our bass. Bass is kind of dominating the low end there. Hear how when we throw that tape machine in, now our kick drum and bass are kind of locked together, really driving that low end. One more time, without. Bass takes over, bass steps out front. We kick this on, our low end attack steps out front on our kick drum, and it sits right with our bass to drive the low end of this song, okay? So that's a different way you can add more low end beef to your kick drum sound. Next time you're doing a mix, instead of reaching for an EQ, try reaching for a tape machine, some saturation, to add a little bit more low end beef to your kick drum. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. Leave a comment down below. What's your favorite tape machine to use these days? We've got the Slate one, SoftTube one, the ones from Waves. Let me know what your favorite is to use, and I will see you guys in the next video.